So in this video, we'll talk about anchor vasculitis and the three diseases associated with it. I try to make it simple as much as I can and more to the point. So, anca vasculitis is a group of diseases. These diseases present with vasculitis symptoms and these include weight loss, shortness of breath, fever, tiredness, arthralgia, and purpura as well, which I think is one of the most important symptoms because this is what makes you think about vasculitis. And anca vasculitis is divided into three main categories. The first one is microscopic polyangitis. And these patients present with vasculitis symptoms, the ones that we mentioned already. They have P. anca positive on labs and their biopsy showed necrotizing inflammation without any granuloma. This is important. No granuloma in microscopic polyangitis. Now, if these patients, the same patients with the same symptoms, vasculitis symptoms, they have upper airway involvement with ulceration and destruction, then these patients have one step further of disease. They will have Cianca positive. On the biopsy here, they have a granuloma. And these, guess what? With the granuloma they have, we call them granulomatous polyangitis. Now, these same patients with GPA, if they have lower airway involvement with asthma symptoms, and these usually present with asthma symptoms that are resistant to it, and we are not able to control these symptoms, then we have to think about another step of vasculitis. And these patients, when we do labs, they will have P-ANCA and C-ANCA, more likely to have P-ANCA than C-ANCA though. On the biopsy, they will have granuloma and eosinophils, and in the serum, they will have IgE and eosinophils as well elevated. And guess what? Based on the biopsy and the serum eosinophils, then we call them granulomatous polyangitis with eosinophilia or eosinophilic granulomatous polyangitis. Now the next question is, for the biopsy we have different resources like the skin, nerves, kidneys, the lungs, or the airways, as well as the nasal mucosa. Now you need to know that the bronchi and the nasal mucosa are not reliable, so never pick them as an answer for a source of biopsy. Skin and nerves, these are least invasive, but they are non-specific. Now the kidneys and lungs, these are the more specific and would be a good choice, especially the kidney. And what we are going to find here, posse immune, which is low immune pathology, as well as a crescent glomerulonephritis. Now, regarding the treatment, we divide it as similar to cancer management. We have initial treatment and maintenance management. And the initial treatment is going to be steroids. And if severe, you can add cyclophosphamide on diagnosis. Um, for maintenance, try to avoid the steroids, and we can use DMARDs as well as the treatment of choice. Now, one important thing, a potential question, when do we do plasmapheresis in these patients with adenka vasculitis? If they have pulmonary hemorrhage, is one. Two, if they have a creatinine more than four and severe acute kidney injury. Now, one last thing before finishing this topic, you need to differentiate well between polyarthritis nodosa and microscopic polyangitis because they can be confusing. Polyarthritis nodosa have ANCA negative and it does not involve the lungs nor the kidney as a glomerulonephritis. And the last thing is the microaneurysm that we see in arteriography of the patients with polyarthritis nodosa. They are not present in anca vasculitis patients. And this is it for anca vasculitis. See you in the next one.